To understand the Beyonder, we must first begin with the Beyonders. So, who and what in the Marvel Multiverse are the Beyonders? The Beyonders date back as far as the May 1980 release of the 63rd issue of Marvel 2-in-1 comic magazine. However, it remained until the 1989 release of the official handbook of the Marvel Universe Update 89, issue number one, for the Beyonders to receive an entry into the databanks of the Marvel Universe. According to their enigmatic history, the Beyonders are a race of extra-dimensional planet collectors, originally unable to leave their own realm for many millennia. When these Beyonders discovered the Marvel realm, they manipulated the Nuwali alien race to create the Savage Land, a technologically self-regulating wildlife preserve established in Antarctica on Earth in its Triassic period. The story of the Beyonder himself dates back almost as far to the February 1984 publication of the first issue of Marvel Comics' 12-issue miniseries, Secret Wars. In this context, the Beyonder is described as the omnipotent embodiment of an entire separated multiverse, whom, as he became self-aware, recognized himself as the only being in his own universe. The origin story for the Beyonder in this context is that his dimension was originally accidentally accessed by lab technician Owen Rees in Fantastic Four number 20, November 1963. Part of the energy from this beyond dimension escaped and imbued Reese with infinite powers, transforming him into the Molecule Man. The remaining energy in the pocket dimension gains sentience and curiosity from this event and dubs itself the Beyonder. In the first 1984 to 1985 Secret Wars series, written by Jim Shooter, with art by Mike Zack and Bob Layton, the Beyonder kidnaps the world's greatest superheroes and most notorious supervillains from Earth and transports them to Battle World, a planet he constructs from the remains of a galaxy he erases. In the second, 1985 and 1986 Secret Wars series, written by Marvel's then editor-in-chief Jim Shooter and primarily penciled by Al Milgram, the Beyonder comes to Earth to walk among us and learn of human desires firsthand. The Beyonder ultimately chooses to create a human body resembling that of Steve Rogers, a.k.a. Captain America, but then changes his hairstyle shortly after to reflect a Michael Jackson-like look. After many adventures, the Beyonder is encouraged to find enlightenment by Doctor Strange, but, upon failing this, decides to destroy the entire Marvel cosmos instead. In a final fight against Owen Reese, the Molecule Man, the energy of the Beyonder is apparently transported back to his realm in an event mimicking the Big Bang event in our own cosmos, and leading, ultimately, to the evolution of sentient hominid life forms there. Dr. Manhattan's forehead is marked with the atomic structure of hydrogen, which he burned onto himself after declining a helmet with an atom symbol. 
Dr. Manhattan first appeared in the graphic novel limited series The Watchman, published in 1986 and 1987. He was created by writer Alan Moore, with artist Dave Gibbons. Moore sought to delve into nuclear and quantum physics in constructing the character of Dr. Manhattan. The writer believed that a character living in a quantum universe would not perceive time from a linear perspective, which would influence the character's perception of human affairs. Moore wanted to avoid creating an entirely emotionless character, so he made Dr. Manhattan retain human habits, but progressively grow away from them and away from humanity in general. The character is primarily cited as a representation of the potential side effects and dangers of a superintelligence, which include detachment from the rest of humanity and potential characteristics of apathy. Jonathan Osterman, whom would become Dr. Manhattan, was born in 1929 to a German-American family. John planned to follow in his father's footsteps as a watchmaker, but when the U.S. dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima, his father declared his profession outdated and instead forced John to work toward a career studying nuclear physics. John attends Princeton and graduates with a Ph.D. in atomic physics. In early 1959, he moves to a research base at Gila Flats, where experiments are being performed on the intrinsic fields of physical objects which, if tampered with, result in their disintegration. Here he meets Jenny Slater, a fellow researcher. The two eventually become lovers. During a visit to an amusement park in New Jersey, Janie's wristwatch is broken, which John promises to fix. However, one month later, John discovers he has left the repaired watch in his lab coat inside a test chamber. While he is inside, the door to the chamber closes and locks. The researchers are unable to open the door or override the countdown and John's body is torn to pieces from the force of the generator. In the following months, a series of strange events and apparitions occur at the research base, leading residents to speculate that the area is haunted. It becomes apparent that John is progressively reforming himself during this time, as indicated by a series of partial bodily reappearances first as a disembodied nervous system including the brain and eyes, then as a circulatory system, and then as a partially muscled skeleton. Each time the appearance lasts for only a few seconds. John eventually fully reappears as a tall, hairless, naked, and blue-skinned man, glowing with a flare of ultraviolet. John gradually becomes a pawn of the U.S. government, which gives him the code name Dr. Manhattan, a reference to the real-life U.S. Manhattan Project, and a costume which he begrudgingly accepts. Dr. Manhattan chooses as his emblem a representation of a hydrogen atom, whose simplicity he declares to be something that kindles his respect. Accordingly, he painlessly burns the mark into his forehead. In the Watchmen comic series, Manhattan's presence tips the balance of the Cold War in the West's favor, and U.S. foreign policy becomes more militaristic as a result. At President Richard Nixon's request, Dr. Manhattan secures an American victory in the Vietnam War within only three months which subsequently allows President Nixon to repeal the 22nd Amendment and serve for up to five terms. Moreover, far from solving the problems underlying international tensions, Manhattan's presence exacerbates them 
while stifling their expression, which inevitably builds toward disaster. Since he works for the U.S. government, Manhattan is exempt from a federal law outlawing costumed heroes, but spends much of his time conducting research. He is single-handedly responsible for the shift to electric-powered vehicles, and Adrian Veidt credits him with causing a huge leap forward in a myriad of science and technology sectors. As a result, the technology of the alternate 1985 of the Watchmen universe is far more advanced. During the only meeting of the Crime Busters group, Manhattan becomes attracted to Lori Japujic, the second Silk Spectre. His relationship with Janie ends acrimoniously shortly after, and he begins dating Lori. During an appearance on a talk show, a reporter ambushes Manhattan with allegations that he caused cancer in his former associates, including Janie. Seeking solitude, Dr. Manhattan transports himself to Mars. The Soviet Union exploits his absence by invading Afghanistan and sparking an international crisis. Eventually, Manhattan brings Lori to Mars to discuss why he should aid humanity, an argument Lori inadvertently wins when she realizes to her shock that her father is Blake, a man she despised for sexually assaulting her mother. From this revelation, Manhattan is amazed by the improbable chances that occurred to result in the birth of Lori, a chain of events he sees as a stunning, thermodynamic miracle. Realizing that, by extension, this miracle can apply to any living thing on Earth, Manhattan is persuaded to return to Earth to protect humanity, rather than disregarding it as insignificant. Finally, however, Manhattan decides to depart Earth again, suggesting that he desires to find a galaxy less complicated than this one. When Veidt asks if his plan worked out in the end, Manhattan replies, In the end, nothing ends, Adrian. Nothing ever ends. Dr. Manhattan is portrayed also in HBO's 2019 Watchmen TV series. He first appears as Cal Abar, who is the husband of Angela Abar, Sister Knight. It is revealed that despite his progressive detachment from and growth beyond humanity, Dr. Manhattan has reversed course and once again desires love and a relationship with a woman. He is eventually destroyed, but in the season finale it is hinted he transferred some of his powers to Angela. In the stories of both Marvel's villain, The Beyonder, and DC's hero, Dr. Manhattan, we are given a blatant parable about the dangers of having too much power. The phrase, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely, was first turned by John Emmerich Edward Dalberg Acton, first Baron Acton, who lived from 1834 to 1902. Yet it still holds true today. The character of Marvel Comics Beyonder is that of an all-powerful toddler, and, from his first appearance in the Marvel dimension, his presence was seen as a threat by all the greatest powers in that cosmos. Because the Beyonders' power came from a source literally beyond any of their abilities to control, they feared, and rightly, that his infinite power in their finite cosmos would ultimately drive him insane, which, of course, eventually it did. The Beyonder descended from on high, having inherited the status of what mankind can only fathom as a god, yet was the absolute embodiment of the archetypal cosmic fool. 
in his bumbling, gullible, imbecilic quest to understand human nature, his own expectations set him up for disappointment. Caught in his own self-fulfilling prophecy, the Beyonder, that prodigal god, failed the test of humanity because he lacked the capacity for compassion toward us lesser mortal beings. While this made the Beyonder an active threat to all the Marvel Multiverse's most powerful beings, the danger arising to all mankind in the DC worlds from Dr. Manhattan was the passive risk of his own indifference to humanity outweighing his ability to act at a pivotal moment, which, of course, is exactly what happens at the end of the Watchmen comic. The danger with the Beyonder was with him running too hot, while that with Dr. Manhattan with him running too cold. Just as the irreverent Beyonder as an omnipotent being descending to our level down here on Earth, is seen as a threat. So, too, the indifferent Manhattan, a man ascended to the status of a living god, may be rightly considered a liability when he ceases to allow himself to be used as the weapon of the U.S. military. Ultimately, as has been argued since the advent of Zoroastrianism and the later heresy of Manny. The heart and soul of mankind is a battlefield for forces from both the realm of light above and the realm of shadow below. We are liable to, in our own lifetimes, be pulled into not only one or the other, but, over time, both. Such oscillation between the symbiotic yin and yang symbolizes the middle way of the Buddhist Eightfold Dharma in the Orient and the running and returning between the pillars of Jachin and Boaz of the Hebrew and Freemasonic lore in the Occident. This is all merely a metaphor for the aligning of the seven chakras along the spine in Vedic Indian Tantra Yoga and the freeing from blockages of the Chi or fire snake energy called Kundalini or alternately Kukul Khan said to dwell within us all. <laughs>